what is up everybody it is drew travel of the burning abyss here with another video and uh yeah i'm doing an updated burning abyss list for the july um format so yeah nothing nothing super crazy i don't think this list is absolutely off the walls nuts um i think that there are a lot of things that the deck does well uh, obviously turboing out Zeus being our, our biggest power play, but I think that the deck just is somewhat consistent and it, it operates the way you want it to operate as long as you pilot it properly. Burning Abyss is a very difficult deck to beat and always has been if, uh, you know, if you don't know how to play against it. And that's kind of the biggest thing we have to our advantage is that a lot of people don't know how the deck works. So, uh, that's why I'm here to show you how to play the deck properly. That way you can go ahead and uh, make other people uh, kind of just sit there and go, oh shit, I just lost a Burning Abyss. That's that's kind of crazy. But before we jump into the video, if you guys are not subscribed already, go ahead and smash the subscribe button. Turn the notification bell on so you know I upload more cool and awesome content just like the video you're watching right now. And uh, yeah, obviously give the video a thumbs up. You know, you, you all know the usual drill. We, we always get good good views, a lot of thumbs up, and a lot of positive feedback for Burning Abyss video. So let's go ahead and dive into this week's deck profile. Okay, so before we go ahead and we dive into this, I also want to state that I'm going to have a video up uh, either this week or next week that's going to show off um, the new Dank Ritual playmat. This is the, the old one, um, but I'm going to get to show off the new one, and there, there won't be a promo code for it, but I will be doing a review on it, and if anyone wants to pick it up, obviously it's fully worth it. Um, but yeah, let me go ahead and just dive into this. So for the BA names, uh, we're still playing the, well, what I call my version of the Power 9, um, which is just, you know, my my three BA cards that I think you should always be playing three of. Um, like, I, I don't see a reason to play any less than this. If you're playing a Hydrolander build, I understand, but I'm, I'm not playing a Hydrolander build because that build is uh, extremely suboptimal and does not really get the job done. I think Pure is significantly better. So, yeah, uh, playing three of each of those is actually really important. Then I have two copies of Farfa and two copies of Alec for the two ofs. Um, I've gone over my reasoning for Alec in prior videos, so... I'm not going to explain it uh, in in depth very far, except for the fact that uh, your opponent activates like Branded Fusion, you chain Beatrice, you send this, their fusion attempts to resolve its effect, and then you chain the Alakas Chain Link 2 and it negates it. Um, that's kind of a, a really big play. And then just other stuff like cards that don't necessarily activate on summon. Like you can just dump this off Beatrice and negate, so that's pretty cool. And Farfa, it's spot removal. I don't think we have to go over... Um, the real meanings behind playing Farfa, but I don't think either of those cards are necessary at three. Uh, so yeah, but then the one ofs we're playing one Bar Bar, one Cal Cab, and one Libic. Um, yeah, these are these are the one ofs. I, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> like that's those are just the one ofs that we play. Uh, now, one thing that I'm really debating right now, and I'll go over this. So I'm playing two Rhino and two Tour Guide. I am like so close to cutting it down to one Tour Guide and no rhinos and i know that sounds absolutely nuts i would literally re replace them with all like ba names like i wouldn't throw anything else in there i'd throw in ba names i'd throw in a second libic i'd throw in uh one rubik and another random ba name um probably like drahig or something um i know that like sounds crazy but the whole issue that i have is that a lot of people are playing valor and imperm and both of these cards get stopped very dead in their tracks by Valor and Imperm. And I'd rather have more BA names that are going to get hit with those. Um, that way I can just make a Zeus very easily. So, yeah, uh, I don't know. I, I really don't know. The, like, the tour guide is good off of the one Skarm Search. But even then, it's like, okay, what what's going to negate it when I do try and summon it? So, uh, yeah, the I, I, I'm toying around with the idea. I'll, I'll let you guys know in future videos. Um, how it goes when I really get to to my my um, final thoughts but then the other monster that we're playing is snow I don't think this really needs much explanation everyone has seen me playing this card um, like you mill three off Dante you can send us off Beatrice like it's 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 just really good I'm not going to explain any further than that I think everyone gets the gist but 
moving on to our going second cards. So there's hand traps and then there's like uh, board breakers. So uh, hand traps, we have three copies of Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring, which is a phenomenal card. It obviously stops brain infusion, stops a bunch of other stuff. Uh, it's the most generic hand trap really. So yeah, gotta play three. I'm also playing three DD Crow. Um, I think this is actually good against most of the meta. So like, it hurts the punk stuff. It hurts the. Um, it, it definitely hurts the Alba's deck. It can hurt Sword Soul Tenyi. Like if they do Tenyi plays, it definitely can hurt that. Um, so yeah, there, there's a lot in the meta that this does hurt. So like yeah, I, I think playing it is actually uh, pretty busted right now. Then the effect negations. We're playing three Valor and three Imperm. Um, so yeah, I, I just think that having effect negation is really good. So having these is fantastic. I'm not really going to explain more because everyone knows Imperm and Valor. Then the board breaker that we're playing is three Droplet. So essentially we are playing 15 going second cards. Um, pretty much. I think it's 15. Um, yeah, so we're playing 15 going second cards. And I think that that's enough to where like mathematically seeing two isn't unlikely like you could see two and then with the rest of your engine you can definitely like pop off you can go ahead and like send a graph off of a droplet and then you know after it resolves you can go ahead and graph effect which is pretty crazy um so yeah and we are playing the imperms that you can send off of this too so if you're ever like scared that your opponent might have a judgment you can always avoid the judgment by sending the imperm uh, off of droplet so yeah pretty darn cool and then uh, these aren't board breakers. This is just all the, the spare cards that we're playing in the decks, so utility cards, power cards, things like that. So two desires and one foolish. So I think that the desires is pretty good considering we're playing a lot of three ofs, especially for the hand traps. Um, the only thing you really have to worry about is losing like your fairy tale snow. That's the only downside, but it's not going to happen like all the time and it's not going to happen like that often uh unless you have really bad luck then I, I i'm sorry that you have really bad luck but yeah i i think that that desires is actually really good get you into more ba names uh more hand traps like whatever you need if you have ba combo and you just want to start off with ba combo you do that and then after you've done all of your ba stuff then you just activate this and hope that you draw like hand traps so yeah and then the foolish this can be a starter it can be um a way to bait out a negation like this card just has a lot of implications to it so yeah uh the foolish burial is actually really really good and then lastly uh call by the grave because it's basically basically a god card um yeah <laughs> just, just play the one of like it's worth it but that's the main deck we're gonna go ahead and jump on over to the extra deck Okay, so extra deck, we're going to start out with our favorite boy, our best friend here, Dante. Got to play two. Uh, three is definitely not necessary. Don't have to play three. Two is more than acceptable. Um, I've never had a third come up. One Beatrice, because she is uh, the, the real catalyst of this deck next to Dante. Like, the, these two cards are just insane. And we do play the purple Dante, uh, which I think is actually really important to play because there are times where your Beatrice does get destroyed and you're like, oh, like I, I really wish I had the purple Dante. So you play it. Anytime I've had this card hit the board, I've won the game. Like, honest, honestly, God, I've never lost a game where this card has hit the board. Um, it's, it's that good. It's just that good. But moving on to the uh, combo that I am like absolutely head over heels for, and that is the Darius combo. Um, I've been playing this for a while now, uh, the la at least the last two lists I think that I've posted. Um, yeah, th this is insane, like absolutely insane. So uh, if you're not playing this already, like definitely play it. The cool part is it also plays around something like Rivalry. So, like, you can just go ahead and make this, make this, and you don't even have to make Zeus. You just have, like, interruptions off of this because of all the materials on it. So, yeah, it's actually a, a pretty dope combo. Um, but if you're, if you're not under Rivalry, you just get a four-material Zeus, which is disgusting. Then we do play the one Downard because, like, there are going to be times where it comes up with Dante. Um... You know, nothing nothing to really talk about that much here. Like, it's it's downered. 
Then we play two copies of Zeus. Um, I do have a third, and if I play like a pure XYZ build, then yeah, I'd probably play a third. But in this build, two is fine. Um, moving on to the links, though, we have one chair beanie and one IP uh, for our our basic com. I'll call them our combo. Uh, link twos because if you're going second chair beanie is really what you're going to go into if you're going first ip is what you're going to go into that's basically the way that it works uh it's actually really really good and then we have nightmare phoenix and nightmare unicorn for our other uh you know spot removal cards cards are fantastic absolutely love these cards like there's nothing better than just getting rid of your opponent's board just off of these um yeah really dope then i'm playing the appalooza um this is, uh, I've talked about this before, this comes up only if you open uh, like Seer and a random BA that's not Graph, um, but there are times still where you can make this with IP, like you might have IP and Beatrice on field, and then you might have like a Snow in the Grave, and you Snow Summon to book their monster, and then they try and continue, and you can just IP into Appalooza for three materials, so yeah, that does happen, uh, not super often though. And then the last card, uh, access code, because like, why not? Um, like this card's absolutely crazy and you can link climb with it, which is also nuts. So yeah, uh, access code is really good. But a lot of times I've found that, uh, you know, you summon Zeus and if you Zeus at the proper time, your opponent just scoops. So I have not made an access code in a very long time, um, unless my opponent just wants me to actually fully play the game through. But yeah, most of the time they just scoop. That, however, is the extra deck, so we're going to go ahead and take a look at the side deck. All right, so side deck time. How are we countering the meta exactly? Well, as you can see, we're playing something that I think is extremely ideal, and that is Necroworld Banshee and Zombie World. Um, I think that this is a very, very strong thing to play against a lot of matchups. It's not just one matchup, it's a ton of matchups. Um, I'm not even going to go through all of them, but all I'm going to say is like Flanderies, uh, we're, we're coming for you like that, that, that this is actually like so insane. So if you're not playing this already, make sure you do, because like, like this is actually the nuts. Um, I, I love playing this. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to go any further than that, but yeah. It, and also, um, you can dump your Necro Road Banshee off of Beatrice in case no one knew that, uh, you can do that. So and then more board breakers got to play the three copies of dark ruler no more um this is the the final card in the side deck if you're going to swap anything in the side i think dark ruler is the card but i think that uh considering the amount of combo decks that are out there it's not a bad idea to play this alongside the droplet like it's actually pretty good so yeah uh i think that that dark ruler is fantastic then the spell and trap removal stuff, also board breaker technically, would be our twin twisters and our evenly matched. Um, I feel like the evenly matched it, in a lot of my recent decks has replaced artifact Lancia because Lancia isn't that crazy right now. Um, for a very long time, I think everyone knew that like Lancia was a mainstay in my side deck, but now, um, I think evenly is the new mainstay in my side deck. Like this card is actually busted. So yeah, got to play the evenly. The twisters are really good, not only for cards like mine and just general back row decks, but it's also um, fantastic against the laundries because you can, you know, do stuff uh, outside of the main phase, which is very important. And lastly, three copies of D Barrier. Um, these are also interchangeable with Anti Spell Fragrance. Or if you feel like playing both and you want to swap the Dark Rulers out, you can swap the Dark Rulers for three Anti Spell. And then going first, you side in three D Barrier and three Anti Spell. And uh, that's probably enough to make your opponent scoop the game up. I know Anti Spell has won me a lot of games over the years. And for good reason, the card is disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. But. That does conclude the entirety of the side deck, which brings the video uh, to an end. I, I know that this was uh, somewhat of a quicker deck profile, but like I've done BA stuff so many times. Uh, when I do updates now, it's like I'm kind of just drilling the same stuff into everybody's head, um, but I'm just kind of adapting per the meta, and I'll obviously explain things per the meta. Uh, this deck will obviously take a drastic change when the splite stuff comes out, we're really going to be struggling at that point. Um, but 
uh, I'll try and figure out something to go ahead and make it work for everyone. However, this is the end of the video. Hope everyone enjoyed. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button like I mentioned earlier and turn the notification bell on. But for right now, this is Drew, Traveler of the Burning Abyss, signing out.